This happened about two months ago and it's become a legend among my coworkers. One of them suggested I write it up and post it on this site. I'm a 44 year old man living in Northern California. I work for a municipal water district in a small city way out in wine country. And basically my job is to deal with the various problems that arise from the water storage and transfer. If you've never been here, Napa County is mostly a giant marshland with tons of farms, vineyards, rolling hills, and small mountains to the east. On the other side of those mountains are more vineyards and wineries. This place is old and so are the water storage tanks. We have towers, ground tanks, old standpipes, and even subterranean tanks, which we call watery graves. Because of the danger of working with them, and the occasional things you would find in them. I do physical checks on the tanks and assess for integrity, damage, tampering or erosion, and take water samples for the guys back at our lab if, if I feel like the potable water could be contaminated. Essentially, I'm what happened to the water boy after his knees went bad and he retired from football. Unlike a lot of the jobs that take people to scary places like night security guards and park rangers, my job gives me the opportunity to see a lot of pretty sunsets and landscapes. And my visits to certain properties usually result in gifts of free wine or homemade cheeses. But every so often, creepy things do happen. I found a lot of crack pipes and dirty needles around the tanks, because rural teenagers use them for cover or as chill spots. I also find spent shells or bullet casings and every once in a while some dumbass uses the tank itself for target practice. I once found a pair of bloody underwear in the field near the base of a tower and some obvious signs of struggle. I definitely called that one in. Until two months ago, the weirdest thing that I ever saw while I was driving through the mountain pass in the evening were two dudes in a horse costume were casually making their way down the road. Then one evening, I got a PAR, which is a property access request, on the way home from work. The site was way up past the state park in the eastern hills. Most of the jobs up there are simply checking the tanks on old dirt roads or talking to the ranchers about the irrigation and plumbing. That area is covered in crazy thick woods and all the roads are dark and windy. Now technically, I could have done this job the following day, but... If I finished it that night, I would be able to cut the next day's workload in half and start my weekend early. So I went. It was just after 8pm by the time I got there, and it was starting to get dark. I had to pay attention because I had never been to this specific place before. It took me a while to find the road that led to the site, but soon, I made a left turn off the main highway and headed down a dusty little one-way road that snaked through the woods. About a quarter mile in, I rolled past a young woman standing by a tree. By the plainness of her clothes, I figured she was one of the locals, probably a rancher's daughter. The woman looked to be in her late teens or early twenties and she held in her arms a grey cat. The two didn't appear to be heading in any particular direction and just watched me with empty stares as I drove by. It was a bit unnerving and she completely vanished into darkness as soon as my headlights pointed away from her. But in another minute or two, I passed an old house and reasoned that it had to be her home. It was pitch black by the time I arrived on location. I had to use my high beams as there were no street lights at all. And eventually I came upon a clearing. Off to the left side of the road was a big field with two ancient water tanks in it. No doubt fed by a well and underground filtration system further up on the hill behind them. I realized I'd be doing a lot of walking around then. A rickety wooden fence surrounded the field and a few horses ambled around inside of it. I found this a little weird because typically ranchers would house their animals at night since late frosts in Napa aren't too uncommon. The whole property seemed in despair like no one had been around for a long time. If there's one thing you learn quick in my job it's that farmers and folks who live in rural places or up in the mountains tend to have guns. The police take too long to get out there during emergencies so these people look after their own. Therefore, wandering out to a tank unannounced is a good way to end up with a bullet in your spine, even if the tank isn't actually on their property. Even though I could probably sneak the job and get done faster, I opted instead to notify the owner of my presence. 
I drove a bit further as I came around another bend. Two people, both probably in their mid-thirties, darted across the road and off into the field. The man was almost naked, except for his underwear and shoes, and the woman was dressed and clutched a bundle of sticks to her body. They looked afraid. I pulled the truck over and rolled down the window slightly, calling out to them, but they ignored me. With the window down, I could hear a third person crying somewhere off in the dark. I've heard of cons like this before, where people try to get you to pull over and then they murder or carjack you, so I kept my doors locked. There was nowhere to make a U-turn, which is exactly what I would have done in that moment. The road was no wider than my truck, plus another half of a car, so I'd have to lean over into the shoulder if another car came by. On the field side of the road, a steep three-foot slope led down into the grass, precluding an attempt to double back. Dim light emanated from the windows of a large house up ahead, so I sped up to reach it. As I approached, more and more people appeared. They glowed in the light of my high beams, then vanished into the dark as I rolled by. Some of them were completely nude. Some buried their faces in their hands, and some staggered as if dazed, while others ran full sprint down the road behind me, trying to get away from something up ahead. At this point, all I wanted to do was make it to the driveway of the farmhouse so I could flip a U-turn and peel the heck out of there. I instantly regretted not owning a firearm, and the sense that I was in danger sort of strobed through my body like electricity. When I finally arrived at the house, I slammed on the brakes and slid across the gravel entryway. The sounds of screams, maybe dozens of different voices, rose and fell around my truck. The first thought was that there was some sort of party going on in the house, but some disaster happened, like maybe a fire or a shooting. The house sat slightly elevated on the hill, about 50 feet from the road on the right side. To the left was the edge of the field and a thick wall of woods. People were running away from the house towards the woods and field, shrieking and battling and cursing. The house was raised enough on the nearby hill that my high beams lit up only the first floor. Darkness completely shrouded the rest of it. A long wooden porch ran the length of the building and just beneath the porch on one side was a huge gaping hole. You know how some of the houses have crawl spaces where you can get under the foundation to run wires and cables and stuff? That's pretty much what this was, but except the hole was big enough to fit a car through, and it looked like it had exploded outwards from the inside, like someone had set off a stick of dynamite under there. Pouring from the blackness of the hole were droves of people. Some were naked, some were clothed, some were bloodied. They limped and screamed and crawled out of the hole like ants from a drowned nest, scratching at their hair and arms. One of them simply walked down to the right of the lawn in front of my truck, sat down cross-legged and began praying with a big smile on her face. Some of them laughed hysterically and sang, then began screaming and crying like they couldn't control their emotions. Sitting on the porch, casting a silhouette from the lights inside, was a man. I couldn't see his face, but he looked down at the chaos unfolding below his house and looked over to me. He reached his hand up slowly and waved, acknowledging my presence, then just stared at me as if he was awaiting a response. If you've never seen a person dying in pain, they sound a lot like animals. The closer they get to death, the more their screams resolve into guttural howls. Someone inside that hole, deep down in the dark, was dying while everyone else fled. They sounded like a tortured animal, and even though I was more afraid than I had ever been in my life, I still felt the momentary urge to rush inside and help. But another part of me knew that that's exactly what the man on the porch wanted. So instead, I threw my truck in reverse and backed out of the entryway, colliding with two people as I did, and blazed off into the night with total disregard for anybody running down that road. I noped out of there at warp speed and nearly wrapped my truck around an oak tree doing so. The drive back to the main highway took less than half the time it took me on the way out. My brain spat a million explanations at me, trying to rationalize what I'd just seen. It was a meth lab under the house that blew up, or a rave that went wrong, or some kind of devil-worshipping orgy of freaks. I'm not content with any of those explanations, but that's all I've got. And even though I'd probably seen 30 people flee that house and half of them ran down the road, I never spotted a single one of them on the drive back. 
The only person I did see was the young woman with the cat. They were standing in the same place as they were before. They hadn't moved an inch. As I blew past her, the woman waved at me. When I got back to the city at the bottom of the hill, I called 911 and told them what I saw. I also followed up with them in the days after that event, but I was never given much of an explanation. All I was told was that they were investigating suspicious activity. I don't take jobs out in that area anymore, and I always finish my work before dusk. There won't be a part two to this story because I'm not stupid enough to go back there. Sorry everybody, but I don't want to see that again.